our next speaker, uh, you probably heard of him already. Um, he, he's actually writing a lot. And on its website, he's actually put a, a small line. There is only a line over there, and then there is a whole list of articles. But this line says something. It says, I like building nice stuff. And uh, <laughs> he built nice stuff. He's actually the creator of Gatsby.js. So can I give a warm applause? <laughs> For Kyle Matthews. Hello. Okay, cool. We're working. So, uh, super happy to be here and be talking about Gatsby. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, so today, gonna give a kind of quick overview of what Gatsby is and why it might be interesting to you, and then uh, different things we're working on next. Uh, so, let's go. So, first, I wanna just start out with just kind of a meta note, which is that we live in like a really remarkable time that, you know, the internet is everywhere. We're all, you know, have in our pockets little rectangles of glass and metal that uh, talk to the internet. And, you know, much, much of everyone's uh, kind of experiences in life kind of depends on, you know, the web software that we're building. Uh, and so that's both like an awesome kind of responsibility, but also it's, it's you know, a great opportunity just to do something meaningful and interesting. Um, and it's a privilege for myself to just to work on kind of internet technologies that help other people build stuff. So Gatsby is an open source static app framework that lets you use React to build blazing fast blogs, documentation sites, e-commerce stores, and any other type of website or app you can imagine. Um, and I started Gatsby four years ago. Uh, I was actually just looking the other day at like uh, you know, an old notebook where I'd kind of sketched out kind of initial ideas for what became Gatsby. And my initial goal was like, I liked React and I wanted a simple way to build a website with it. Um, and four years later, there are now tens of thousands of apps and websites built with Gatsby, and we also have a really thriving ecosystem of contributors and uh, services that integrate with Gatsby. Some of them uh, you've probably seen, like uh, the React Doc site is built with Gatsby, uh, the Impossible Foods, uh, which is a uh, meatless meat thing, um, and lots of other sites are built with Gatsby. You can check it out the the showcase. And then uh, a year ago, um, my co-founder Sam Bogwat and I we founded a startup to help continue to grow Gatsby. Um, and we wanted to model ourselves after other kind of great open source uh, companies like Elastic, Confluent, and HashiCorp. And our goal is to build a really tremendous open source uh, ecosystem. And then, um, and, and, and kind of complement that, build uh, powerful cloud services that uh, tens of thousands of customers would be happy to pay us for. And on that note, uh, we're actually getting pretty close to launching our first cloud product, uh, Gatsby Preview. And the idea of Gatsby Preview is basically to give content editors kind of real-time uh, staging environment for uh, their site. So they're like editing in the CMS, and they can see in their Gatsby site the changes as they're making edits. So it kind of helped them quickly um, prep content to uh, push onto the website. And uh, this is some of the team. Uh, this is a bit dated, so we've, we've, we've heard more people since then. But uh, it's just a really fun, fantastic team. And uh, we're distributed, so we're kind of all in the world, and, uh, which has lots of interesting parts to it. Uh, so what makes Gatsby different? Um, first is uh, we have first-class support for performance. And I like to say uh, fast websites are alike, but every, every, every slow website is slow in its own way. 
Uh, and the idea is that, you know, if you look at any fast website, it's doing a lot of the same stuff as every other fast website. So kind of the idea we hit on is like, why don't we just kind of enforce those things within the framework? Um, a lot of frameworks, they kind of leave it up to you. So you, do those, you can do those same things, but it's kind of on you to figure it out. Uh, so Gatsby, part, part of how it is able to do that is uh, we think of Gatsby as a compiler where you write React components and you give them to us and then we turn that into the fastest site possible. Uh, kind of cover that already. Uh, another way that Gatsby is different is it has kind of a great support for the content mesh. So in the past, people used like monolithic CMSs like you know, WordPress or Drupal or the long list of kind of uh, proprietary CMSs out there. And these are steadily being replaced by uh, kind of a new breed of modular specialized content systems. So if you look at kind of your average website, uh, you know, a lot of the different parts of this website are actually kind of owned by different specialized services, like Cloudinary for images, you know, Algolia is doing providing search, uh, Stripe is providing e-commerce. You know, Contentful is like a headless CMS that's providing you know the content for uh, the different site, different parts of the site, and that's pretty novel actually, like compared to how people build websites even just a few years ago. And Gatsby, uh, you know, uh, kind of like uh, you know we saw that trend, and we want to kind of sit in the middle to make you know doing these sort of websites, which is really powerful because it's really nice just to be able to string together different services that you don't have to maintain, uh, but make it so that it's like pleasant to do so and performant. Because one problem with having lots of third-party services that you can't control is like performance is kind of a crapshoot. Uh, and Gatsby handles that. Uh, so we think of ourselves as like kind of the glue or the integration layer for this content mesh. Another way Gatsby is different is that it's optimized for change. And this is important because as everyone knows, uh, website requirements change. So you might think that you're starting one day with building you know, one type of website, but the next day it turns out you're building something completely different or something completely new in addition to uh, the old thing. So kind of a, like, a little story of how this uh, uh, might happen and does happen all the time is Scrappy Startup, it launches a one-page HTML site at startup.com, and then they start working on their web app, and they launch that, and using React or Vue or whatever. And they launch that at app.startup.com. And then uh, they're starting to grow, and they hire a marketer, and they realize the marketer doesn't want to add the HTML, so they have to add a CMS. Uh, then uh, they want to add a blog. Um, so the marketer's editing like, the main content page, and they're like, oh, now we want a blog. And like, it doesn't really fit within like, the, the main startup.com, so they add blog.startup.com with WordPress. And then they want to add documentation, and so they add yet another, another system at docs.startup.com so engineers can maintain docs and markdown. And the reason this happens is that most website systems work until they don't. So it's like you, like, okay, I'm going to pick this thing. It seems like the perfect fit. And you're going along, and it's great. And then requirements change, and you can't kind of make it stretch, and so you just kind of pull some other specialized tool out of it off the, bar, off the shelf. But I think everyone can agree that it'd be a lot simpler if you're just using the same tool for um, you know, all the different systems. So you know, the blog, the, the, the documentation, um, you know, the kind of the main marketing pages, et cetera, et cetera, were just you know, the same tech, same components. So that's another funny thing about like, you see these startups that, do that, that kind of fall into this trap. And like, every one of the sites is like completely different design. And some are much uglier than other ones, probably the ones the engineers were maintaining. Anyways. Um, but yeah, wouldn't it wouldn't be nicer if you know, there's shared components, shared tech, shared dev and production uh, workflows across all of these. Uh, and that's what Gatsby tries to be. So th this is a uh, two by twos are always nice now and then. And the, 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 where I'm placing these different uh, technologies is highly subjective, and there's lots of ways of thinking about this. So you know, don't, don't, don't take this too seriously. This is more. Um, Kind of that experiment. But anyways, so traditional static site generators, uh, I would say are, um, you know, they, they have a lot of advantages for building websites in that they produce, uh, you know, static sites, which are very scalable, um, easy to run. Uh, and they also, you know, tend to have a lot of nice functionality for like blogs and kind of marketing sites and so forth. Um, but 
I, I didn't put them all the way to the right on Good for Science because um, they don't tend to have the feature set necessary to handle more complex types of sites. So they kind of fall down at some level of complexity. So traditional CMSs, uh, they are, oh, also with static site generators, like they tend to also just focus on like HTML. Like so most of them do like markdown to HTML. And so again, like any sort of like client side app functionality or even server side app functionality is completely up to you. So that's where they're very low on uh, apps. So traditional CMSs, uh, they do have a lot, much richer kind of tool, toolkit for building sites. Uh, and they're also, they tend to have a lot of like form functionality sort of thing um, and, some, and some support for doing client side stuff. So anyway, so they're not like great for apps, like nobody ever chooses a CMS as their kind of foundation for building an app, but they're also not terrible. Like you can like, if you like deliver a website for a client and the client says, hey, I need this like, you know, slightly appy like thing on this one page. It's not too hard to like, you know, fit it in. And then app frameworks, um, this is stuff like, you know, Ruby on Rails, um, or Next, or Next, or other stuff like that that's just kind of like focused on apps. They are obviously great for apps. That's why people pick them all the time. Uh, but they're not really that great for sites. Uh, you know, building websites, especially complex ones, lots of screens with like lots of content, lots of content editors, uh, there, there's a lot of really complex problems around like scaling it and caching and workflows, et cetera, et cetera. And you, know, you can use an app framework to build your own CMS, and lots of people do, but also lots of people fail miserably at that. So um, yeah, so they're okay. they, you can use them for sites, but they're not really optimized for that. And then Gatsby. So obviously, we're at the top right <laughs> of the two by two. Um, anyway, so Gatsby tries to uh, be both like have excellent support for building what you know sites, so it has kind of all the, the the functionality to handle like images and video and lots of content, lots of screens. Um, you can build really sophisticated UIs like with a React component, you know, architecture. Uh, but also like every Gatsby site is a React app, and so you you know any sort of app like thing that you want to do, uh, it's very straightforward to do that. And so Gatsby kind of solves this this dilemma of you know, the website requirements keep growing and, you know, you kind of run into the limits of the old technology. With Gatsby, you'd be able to, like, launch, like, a one-pager with Gatsby. You can, like, build your app in Gatsby. You can, you know, add the blog. You can add docs. All those things are very doable within Gatsby. So, yeah, so it's a flexible toolkit for handling common problems. Uh, switching topics a little bit. Uh, Moore's Law, probably everyone here is familiar with it. It was a prediction made in 1965 that transistor density would double every two years. And this was made by one of the Intel founders. And remarkably, uh, Intel was able to pull that you know, feet off of doubling transistor density for something like 40 years. And pretty much all of modern society is kind of due to that feat. Um, an equivalent trend is true in the web world, uh, which is that the cost to build and run a website has declined uh, precipitously since the start of the web. Um, and one of our goals is to you know, keep that trend going. Um, so just a few examples of this. Uh, Amazon.com launched in 1994. Uh, and I, did, I was doing some research this talk and like, look at their stack. And uh, they did C++ backend and then Perl frontend. And what I found really remarkable, actually, is that they're still using that to this day for a lot of their stuff. They're still using C++ and Perl. So if those technologies intrigue you, uh, you can go get a job in Seattle. <coughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so 1994, things were like super, super manual. Uh, you had to buy your own servers. You had to set up your own like, you know, racks to like put the servers on. Uh, the only database available was like really expensive Oracle database. Uh, storage bandwidth was both expensive and unreliable, so uh, not fun. And by, by the way, these cost numbers are kind of made up. Like, it, it's a decent estimate. But anyways, let's just say it costs 700K to build the site and run it the first year. And then uh, jumping forward a ways uh, to harrys.com, uh, which was founded in 2013. And they uh, built their site on Ruby on Rails. Uh, they use commodity servers, open source software. Uh, storage bandwidth is both cheap and reliable. Um, but scaling Ruby on Rails is a pretty specialized skill. And so uh, that plus. Um, 
you know, having to like set up servers and uh, set up the infrastructure and run the infrastructure uh, keeps the cost fairly high still. So let's say, again, this is a wild estimate. But anyways, let's just say it costs 300K to build it and run it for the first year. And then uh, just this last fall, uh, Harry's.com launched a new brand uh, called uh, Flamingo, which is like a woman's shaver brand. And uh, five years after their founding, uh, instead of using Ruby on Rails, they used Gatsby. And pairing it with Gatsby, they did headless CMS. Uh, all of their assets are static because you know there's a Gatsby build process and builds it, and they produce static assets. They put those on the CDN, and so scaling and running the site is both extremely cheap uh, and it's also quite easy because the CDN does all the work, and you know files can't break, <laughs> which is a handy thing about them. Um, yeah, and then you know building and maintaining the site is very straightforward because they're using modern web app framework and tooling, and uh, Again, wild estimate, but let's say it costs 150K to uh, build it and run it. And so some trends that we can see from this is the going from commercial software to open source software, uh, going from owning your own servers to using either cloud virtual machines uh, or lately uh, serverless, you know, kind of functions as a service like Lambda and uh, uh, so forth. And uh, another trend is you know, static assets on CDNs. Another is you know, this content mesh idea where uh, you know, uh, Shot Flamingo is using Contentful, which is a headless CMS. And so instead of running their own CMS, which would have you know, meant setting up a server and securing it and maintaining it and so on and so forth, they can use a you know, kind of like a professionally maintained, hosted um, CMS. That was much simpler for them to you know, get going with. And uh, uh, our Gatsby team, we actually did a webinar with uh, the Harry's team recently. And so um, I kind of like extracted some bits from the webinar. Because it's really interesting just to hear them talk about like why they chose Gatsby and what the experience was like uh, working with it. So hopefully audio works. So what I'll talk about next is the challenge we were facing. Uh, because Harry's is a fairly big company, we, uh, Flamingo is going to be a big product launch um, that had to handle a lot of traffic with yeah, not a lot of room for failure. Um, because Flamingo would be a new brand building a following from the ground up, we wanted to make sure things like website issues or downtime didn't negatively affect the launch and impact first impressions of the brand. Uh, we were dealing with a fairly tight timeline as well, uh, just a matter of months. And most visitors would be coming in on mobile as well. And we knew we needed performance out of the box because um, you know, after our time at Harry's, we knew performance is a very big factor when it comes to online shopping. And it's especially important on mobile as you know, bounce rates tend to be higher. Yeah, so hey, I'm Tim. Um, and yeah, like Johnny said, um, we were sort of tasked with making this decision about like the technical uh, architecture and infrastructure for this new brand, Flamingo. Um, but it wasn't just about uh, Flamingo, it was also, we sort of had this plan to, to launch more brands over the, over the next few years. And, so we wanted to just kind of take this opportunity and survey a landscape and see like what, if any new tools had come out, because just for context, um, harrys.com launched in 2013 and it's built on Rails and um, it's been a great and like very successful website, but we sort of just wanted to take the time and see like, you know, is there anything new out there that was potentially interesting or exciting? And um, that's about the time that we sort of first discovered Gatsby. Um, and we started getting really excited about it as we learned more about it. Um, for our team, uh, Gatsby, was sort of the was the tool that reintroduced us to this idea of static publishing. Um, we had used static publishing before. You know, we had like a, an engineering blog that ran on Jekyll, and so we were sort of familiar with the idea of it, but had I think pigeonholed it a little bit into like, oh yeah, you know, you might build like a, a static simple blog with it, but you wouldn't build like a modern, highly interactive web app in it. Um, and you know, it was when we sort of discovered Gatsby that we realized that didn't have to be a case that you didn't have to compromise necessarily on the uh, the interactivity of your site. And you could use all these tools that you love, like React and GraphQL and stuff. Um, we were also really excited about its integrations with just all sorts of data providers, but especially with third-party CMS systems. Um, we'd had some experience maintaining our own custom CMS and knew that we wanted to go with third-party CMS this time around. And uh, Gatsby's story there was really exciting. Um, and then like a lot of those things that Dustin was just talking about all of the additional things for performance, you know, outside of just the general architecture of Gatsby, from image optimizations, code splitting, prefetching, um, we had had experience 
sort of implementing those by hand on, on the harrys.com website and knew how time consuming that was to get right and how tricky it was and how much specialized knowledge it, it required. And so having a framework make those smart decisions for us and kind of get it out of our hair was really compelling. And we knew we'd be able to spend more time sort of delivering on the, the product itself. Yeah, so then we um, started working on the site itself. Um, yeah, we spent our team, you know, worked on it for the next several months. And yeah, it really did um, feel like building a regular React app after some initial setup. We got to use technologies we were used to, technologies that we wanted, you know, Redux, style components, Cypress, just, yeah, things that we wanted to use. And yeah, we tested performance uh, pretty close to launch and the results were great. We yeah, took a look at Lighthouse, uh, took a look at Speed Curve, and we had been kind of tracking performance as we were going, but when we were closer to launch, we had a much better picture of what our production site would be, and yeah, the numbers were looking really solid, really good. And then, um, yeah, launch day uh, finally came up, and our team had been working very hard for months and months, and the day, yeah, finally came to launch, and there definitely was a lot of pressure, like, you know, as I'm sure a lot of you have been through, just uh, product launches uh, do have a lot of nervousness involved. And we had a lot of press lined up. We had magazines and other publications that were going to release their articles at a certain time. So we had to launch at a specific date and time. And yeah, we had, you know, the usual uncertainty of what might go wrong about the high traffic coming in. But yeah, then we flipped the switch and it was actually really smooth. Um, yeah, we were able to, or like Tim was mentioning, because of the architecture, it was on Fastly, and we were able to handle 10 times as much traffic as we're you know, seeing currently um, that happened at launch. And because there was no web server, um, we didn't really have yeah, too much concern about scaling with uh, the high peaks of traffic that we were seeing. Yeah, so like Johnny said, the launch went really well. Um, and, you know, we had had such a good experience, like, during the sort of building and, like, leading up to the launch process with Gatsby, which I think we had anticipated. Um, but one of the sort of most pleasantly surprising things has, has come after launch, and that's in, like, what a, like, pleasure it is to uh, both sort of maintain and also even be on call for, for this app and for this architecture. Um, there's just so few moving pieces compared to, like, sort of a traditional web server setup for the front end that... Uh, you know, it's 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 honestly really hard for to have downtime when you're just serving static assets out of a CDN. Um, it's you know you don't have the traditional sort of scaling worries. Um, your sort of build process just feels much more deterministic. Uh, it's a lot easier to sort of insert these these sanity checks at different points in that build process to to verify what you're pushing out. Um, and I think one of the 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 coolest things about what this architecture allowed us to do and what Gatsby allowed us to do was uh, we had a couple of teammates join about a month before the launch. Um, and usually like sort of the, the training to go on call for our sort of traditional architectures, would we would expect it to take, you know, a couple months before people were, were ready for that. Um, whereas with this, people were able to be onboarded almost immediately and like were able to be present and around for that launch and have like a stake in it, even as like fairly new team members. Um, and so that was really exciting and I think empowering for, for the whole team. And here's a video of the site. Uh, this is shopflamingo.com, just to give you sort of some idea of some of the interaction and you know how quickly this thing loads. Um, you know, it was sort of built over the course of several months to be highly interactive and really tell the story of our brand since we were launching online for the first time. So just a quick idea of you know what the site actually looks like. You can see it at shopflamingo. Yeah, so I want to show that because I thought it gave a really uh, great kind of feel for you know what 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 it's like to build and run a Gatsby kind of a, a large scale kind of very serious Gatsby um, site. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed uh, talking to them. So um, yeah, so what's next for Gatsby? Uh, so Gatsby is in you know great shape uh, as mentioned. Like tons of people are using it, tons of people are contributing to it. Uh, but, you know, we're not done. There, there's a lot more left uh, to do. So, uh, so first is, you know, JavaScript tooling and frameworks are improving rapidly. Um, you know, the last five, six years have just seen a huge kind of flood of new tools and uh, frameworks. So, like, React, of course, Vue, Angular, uh, Webpack, um, Babel, um, 
you know, and dozens, hundreds of other ones. And, and, and frankly, like Gatsby wouldn't exist without these. Um, what's nice though is that because we're built on top of you know Webpack and Babel and React, as these tools get better, you know Gatsby gets better as well. Uh, so just just some stuff that we're you know watching. Um, you know Webpack five that we heard about earlier uh, has a lot of ton of nice improvements. Uh, Babel seven came out uh, late last year. It was really great. Uh, Post CSS, uh, CSS and JS lib, uh, React hooks, which just came out last week, week before, whatever it was. Um, React Fire, uh, which is an uh, effort to modernize and shrink React DOM, uh, make every Gatsby site smaller and uh, more modern. Uh, React Suspense is coming uh, sometime next year, which will really help out with like kind of building app functionality. Uh, MDX and like a whole bunch of other stuff. Another thing that we're working on is improving uh, Gatsby build times. So most Gatsby sites now build in around like 30, 90 seconds. Um, there's some that are faster, there's some that are slower, but that's like kind of a rough range uh, that we see a lot of. And that's pretty good uh, for most sites. Um, but it's also unacceptable for uh, other sites, which you know, makes Gatsby not a you know, acceptable choice right now, which is not what we want. And so um, yeah, so, so we're working uh, pretty continuously to make Gatsby builds faster. Because um, we know this, like, when it, you know, what are we can do to speed up builds that means more people uh, can use Gatsby. So React V2, or, or Gatsby V2, rather, which came out last September, um, that's already was 50, 60% faster than V1. Um, we also have a lot of R&D work um, kind of in progress uh, that uh, lead to significant improvements for many types of sites. And our kind of our long-term goal is we want the average build to be under a second. Um, and if we can hit that, it kind of just like changes completely what even is a build, you know? It's not like a build almost in a sense anymore. Like the builds just kind of become invisible. It's basically something changes, some bit of data changes, and then it's immediately live on your website. And... Uh, another thing that we're uh, working on is Gatsby ecosystem. Uh, we work really hard to, you know, make the ecosystem, just, just make, you know, being involved with Gatsby, uh, ma making the ecosystem feel like a very kind of welcome and helpful uh, uh, place. And, um, yeah, and that, that uh, has paid off in a big way in that, you know, we have over 1,600 contributors to the main Gatsby repo. Um, in Gatsby's plugin ecosystem, we're up to 683 plugins, and around 500 of those are just in the last year. So, like a ton of people are like creating Gatsby plugins, contributing to the NPM. Uh, and also of note too is that 224 of those are source plugins, which means it's like connecting Gatsby up to some external system. So, whether it's a CMS or you know Twitter or Dropbox or you know, Airtable or Google Spreadsheets. I mean, there's just like pretty much any any system on the internet. You can like install a plugin and to like start sucking in data into a Gatsby site. And uh, there's a, a something called Reed's Law, which says that the utility of large networks can scale exponentially with the size of the network. Um, so, which means that Gatsby's utility uh, also scales exponentially. With each new OSS contributor, uh, each new plugin that's published, each new service which is like integrated in um, via a plugin, um, yeah, which is great because like, you know, Gatsby by itself is like interesting uh, and good. <laughs> like you can like build a site and say, yeah, it's cool. But uh, but what we're trying to do though, more than just you know build out this like nice one tool, is like create an ecosystem that you know, is, is kind of filling in this long list of use cases. So that, you know, kind of like we were talking about earlier, you know, Gatsby is built for change. So that kind of anything you can throw at a, a project, like Gatsby will little handle. Uh, another big thing that we're working on is theme supports, uh, which we're super excited about. Um, and there's two people working on this full time, and soon a third person will be joining. Um, and the idea is that, you know, right now Gatsby's pretty low level, so if you want to build something, you kind of like start with like the base Gatsby package, and then you kind of add up functionality, write components, add styles, and then at some point, you know, you have whatever you're looking for. But with the uh, themes, you will just install it, and they'll just be NPM packages, 
and then install it, you have like an amazing blog or portfolio or doc site or e-commerce site, et cetera, et cetera. And so it, it kind of will enable an ecosystem of like web products almost, you know, where uh, you want something and a theme author can like create that, but also they can make it like as configurable as they want. Uh, so you can like pass in variables to do like do different things. Uh, you can expose, you know, design tokens. Um, you can allow components to be overridden uh, to like customize it in different ways. Um, and also, yeah, and so for people who, uh, you know, in a lot of kind of existing CMSs, like WordPress is, has a ton of this, there's people that just like take themes and then create child themes where they use some, you know, skinning and then release those. And so that will enable that sort of thing in the Gatsby world as well, that people like release all sorts of blog themes and uh, other, other types of themes. And it's also great for uh, a lot of organizations that kind of have repetitive, you know, kind of very similar websites that they're building and maintaining. Because uh, now you can create like one base theme that is shared across all those different sites. And uh, even though Gatsby themes are like pretty new and experimental stage still, uh, we're already seeing that um, Apollo uh, has been working with Gatsby themes. And they just launched their first website uh, based on that theme uh, the other day uh, called Principled GraphQL. And so now they have this like, you know, uh, theme that can have like a really nice uh, sidebar and uh, typography and markdown support. And all they have to do is install the theme, add the markdown files, click publish, and off it goes. <coughs> so yeah, so that's my talk. So Gatsby is ready for you to try it out um, and hope you all take a chance to do so soon. Thank you, Carl Matthews. Um, so I have a couple of questions. Yeah, the questionnaire yeah. has begun, ladies and gentlemen. So, um, so what did trigger you to create Gatsby? What Sorry, what? What's your main motivation uh, for creating Gatsby? Uh, yeah, I mean, initial motivation was pretty much like scratch my own edge sort of thing, where, uh, you know, I've been doing JavaScript apps since like 2011-ish or whatever. And uh, yeah, and it's just kind of like painful to jump into like CMSs or other weird stuff. So I was like, okay, like if I ha whenever I need to build a website, I want to have like a really nice system that has all the tools, you know, like React and Webpack and so forth, all set up. And so initially, it was very much like I want the tool that I want to use for building websites, um, and then I open source it, of course, and then it kind of snowballed past that over time. Nice. Yeah. So. Um You've been mentioning that it's an ecosystem. Can you um, uh, explain a little bit how this compares, for example, to Nuxt and, uh, and Next? Um, yeah, I'm not uh, super duper familiar with their ecosystems. Um, I think one of the big distinguishing differences, though, is that uh, you know just that Gatsby does have a very rich API uh, uh, setup, and so that plugins can do an unusual amount of stuff, which means that plugins, a lot of plugins have been created. So I, I think my, my, my understanding is that with Next and Next, that a lot of times each project's kind of you know, building their own, writing their own code to solve the you know, same problems. And so it's a little bit harder to like share code across projects. Uh, with Gatsby, you know, a lot of common problems have been turned into plugins. And so um, that's, that's kind of enabled that kind of rich kind of sharing of, of these, these plugins that have been created. Nice. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you.